Hello and welcome to a video from FilmsByChris.com. That's Chris the K. I'm Chris the K. There's a link in the description to my website as well as the full playlist. This is a playlist and uh, it's a series. I hope that you check out the previous videos because uh, you'll probably learn a lot from them. Uh, but I have also a link in the description of this video to all the examples in all the videos here. So you can go there, you can download these files. Today we're going to go into examples and we're going to go down to draw image and we're going to draw an image. And we're gonna have this project, we have a folder with an image in it. Uh, we have map info, QR, and RG script here. This is going to be what our final code looks like. I'm going to start off with it shortened up and then add to it to try to simplify things for everybody. But let's go ahead and jump right in. So I'm in that directory. And again, there's a folder called graphics, which is where you can put graphics that you can draw to, draw from, you can get images to draw to the screen from. <laughs> Inside the graphics directory right now, I have a PNG that's labeled FBKQR PNG. It is a QR code, uh, which you'll see once we load it up in the game. Uh, I, I was thinking, what, what image can I draw to the screen? I recently saw a video where somebody uh, jokingly made a mod of Doom that throughout the game with certain pickups, it puts up a QR code and you have to scan it to uh, pay to continue the level. This isn't quite that, but I thought it'd be cool to put up QR code, which uh, you can scan with your phones or whatever uh, within the game. Again, in here, we have that folder with that image. Then we have three files. We have our map info file, which is going to load up our event handler, which we're, I'm just calling Z events. Um, and then in here, we also have our Z script, which again, if you watch previous videos, I say it every time, just in case someone misses out on it. We're just saying the version, and then we are including whatever list of scripts you want to include. In this case, it's the QR script. So let's go ahead. I'm using NeoVim as my text editor. Use whatever text editor you prefer, although I do have a NeoVim setup which helps autocomplete stuff for you. And we're going to start off with this basic script. Let's go ahead and actually run the game so you can see what's going to happen. Again, gzdoom-file, say the current directory, then I'm telling it doom2 and to warp to map1. And right when the game starts, you can see up in the top left corner, there's a QR code. Let's go ahead and exit out of the game and go back into the code. So we have here, we have an event handler. Event handler is just like functions. There are classes with functions that run by themselves. We had to, we have to give it a name, which we call it Z events, uh, which I'm sure I named it that just because I pulled it from some example code somewhere. Uh, but you can call it whatever you'd like. You can call it load QR. But remember, you have to put that name in the uh, map info file, just like this. So game info and then in the brackets, add event handlers equals and whatever you named it inside that script. That tells uh, Doom to run this class, to so load this class and all its functions. Then I'm going to create some variables. I'm going to create a Boolean. A Boolean just means true or false. We are creating a pick loaded and by default it's set to false. Then we're going to create a variable, an object that's called, uh, that is a texture ID and we're going to call it pick. Okay. We have world ticks here. This is something that's going to loop constantly throughout the game uh, 35 times a second. Okay, what is it doing? Well, in here it's going to check our variable here. Is the pick loaded? Okay, it's saying exclamation mark. That means not. So if it's not loaded, if we have not loaded the image, well, then we're going to load the image. So we're going to use this function here, text man, texture for, or check for texture, uh, the name of our graphic file. So it's it was called fbkqr.png. It's in the graphics folder. This is going to be whatever that file's name without the extension. It could be a JPEG if you want. Uh, it could probably be a, a, a bitmap file that you want. But you just put whatever it's called uh, without the extension. And keep the name short. Uh, I'm not sure about current versions of Doom, but there is a, a limit to the name. So just keep the name short. And then we're just saying text men any type. So this is basically just going to load the image and it's going to put it into our uh, texture ID called pick. And then we're going to set, once that's done, we're going to set our pick loaded to true. What The reason we do this is if we didn't do this check every single time uh, that there's a world tick, so 35 times a second, it's going to reload that image and we don't want that. So this is just saying load the image, set it true so that we don't do anything in here again. Okay. Now that that's done, now we're going to come down here and this is going to render the overlay onto the screen. It's going to check if pick loaded, meaning it has been loaded. See, there's an exclamation mark meaning not loaded here. It's just saying this. So now it's true because we've said it true. So it won't do this until we have loaded the image. Once it's loaded, well, we're going to take the screen. We're going to draw a texture. What texture are we going to draw? Well, our pick, which we create, which we set here. 
Uh, and then there's some variables here. So I always try to put comments in here. Anything that's forward slash forward slash, it's purple on my screen, is a comment. So in here, I can click on this and go to the documents page, which will give you more information on exactly what's going on here. It will tell you exactly what can be passed to this and give you examples. So here, it, we're giving it its texture. Is it animated? Its position in X and Y and any tags. The tags are down here. I haven't played around with these too many, but you can look over these and you can pass multiples. It tells you whether it's a true false or if it's an integer, uh, but play around with those, right? But we're just loading uh, it to the screen. So we're saying uh, alpha channel. Uh, so I think it's allowing an alpha channel, even though my, my image doesn't have any alpha channel, but we're saying it to true, okay? Uh, uh, so we're saying load that picture. It's not animated. Put it at coordinate zero, zero, which means top left of the screen. Allow an alpha channel. That's what we're saying right there. So that gives us the QR code up in the top corner there. So let's take it a step further. Again, here's my full code. I'm gonna just move this off screen now and I will copy and paste things as we go. Uh, but our final code should be pretty much what I have in there. Uh, so what do we wanna do? We want to uh, maybe position the image, right? So let's create a variable or a couple of variables. We'll call it uh, W and H. That'll be the width and height. INT means integer, it's a number, a whole number, no decimal points, so we're gonna get the width and height of the image, which we're creating those variables, but we'll set them in a moment. We also want to get its uh, position, so POS X uh, for left and right, and POS for position Y, which is up and down. And then uh, we're also gonna create an integer, and I'll call it time out. And what that's gonna do is when the level loads, we're gonna have the image load, but after a certain amount of time, we're going to have it so that the image disappears. So it loads and it's there and it goes away. Uh, this will help you load images at the beginning, right? And then I'm sure there's a way, I haven't gotten into this, but you can probably set the alpha and have it fade away if you want. Um, but also you can have images load maybe when you do a pickup or get hurt, you can have them show up on the screen for a certain amount of time. Okay, so We've created some variables, we haven't set them, and we haven't used them. So let's go ahead and do some settings. So in here, uh, when we load the picture, let's go ahead and say w comma h. Uh, and we'll set that equal to, where are we gonna set that equal to? We're going to get the texture size. So we're saying textman dot get size. So this is a function that's built into our, our program and we're passing it pick. So this is gonna get the size of whatever the picture is. We load the picture here, we get the size here, it's going to give it a size, and it's gonna go into variables uh, W and H. So that will give us the size of the image. But we also want to now position it so it's not on top uh, left. And the reason uh, we're gonna do that, we're gonna to try to center it on the screen. So we had to get the left and right because uh, the position is based on the top left corner of the image. So what I can do here is I can set our position X and our position Y to half and half, right? So we're saying set this variable, we're gonna get the screen width divided in half. That brings us to the center. Uh, get the screen height and divide it by half. Now we need to put those values somewhere, we're gonna put them down here instead of zero, zero. So real quick, I'll just, before I put those variables in, I'm gonna come in here and put 100, 100. If we run the game now, it's going to be up in the top left, moved over 100 pixels and down 100 pixels based on, I just tried to point at it, the top left corner of the image. Let's go back into here and change these instead of hard numbers. So you can set it to a specific place based on numbers, but the screen size is gonna change depending on your resolution, right? So I'm gonna say uh, POS X, that's the left and right, and POS Y. So we're getting the screen size, half of it, screen size uh, height, half of it. Now, it's going to almost be centered, right? There it is, it's almost centered, but the top left corner of it is actually centered, not the image. So what we need to do now, and this is very common if you've done programming in any language where you're positioning images, um, most of the time it's positioned based on the uh, top left corner. So now all we have to do is up here for our variables, instead of just saying get the screen, so we're gonna get the screen, divide it in half, and then we're going to subtract the width, but not the full width of the image, because then we'd be lining up the bottom right corner, we're gonna take half of the width. So we're getting the screen height, dividing that in half, we're getting the width of the image, dividing that in half, and subtracting one from the other. We will do the same for uh, the height. 
Now, when we run this, our image will be centered on the screen and it will center it uh, regardless of our resolution and our screen size. I do want to point out, I put getting the texture height when the picture loads so that every time we loop, we're not running this unnecessarily. Y you could put that down here uh, and that'd be fine. I don't put these in here because what happens is, well, I can show you what happens. Let me go ahead and put those in here and run it. And you'll see what happens on my computer. It was in the center for a second and then moved because when the level first loads, my resolution hasn't finished setting yet. And actually, I wonder if I go in this way. If I go in this way, it's fine. But since I'm jumping, warping right to the level, uh, it's getting the screen size before the screen size has finished loading on my machine. So I am putting it outside here. So every time the the level ticks, it's going to get the screen height. So it's going to be processing that 35 times a second, uh, which isn't a huge deal. Uh, but it's important that if your screen changes size during the game, that you get the new screen height. The size of the image isn't going to change, but the size of the screen might change uh, depending on whether you're playing in window mode or full screen mode. Okay, so we have it loaded to the center of the screen. Let's add something else now. So we have our our timeout here, right? Timeout, we set it as an integer. By default, if you when you create it in ZDoom or ZScript, it's going to set that to zero. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say timeout plus plus. So I can add a number to it, but saying timeout plus plus just means whatever timeout currently is at, add one to it. So it's going to start at zero and it's going to 35 times a second, add to that. So when it gets to 35, that's one second. Let's come down here. Again, this is where we're drawing the image. So this is going to constantly happen every time that it's going to render uh, an image to the screen. What I can do is I can say if, and I can say timeout is greater than 128, right? So that'd be four seconds. So once we hit the four second mark, what are we going to do? We're going to say return. And what does return do? That means exit out of this function. So when it starts, every time it draws the screen, it's going to draw the image until the timeout is over 128, which in this case would be four seconds, theoretically. Uh, in that case, it's going to stop here and not continue. So now if we run our game, oh, I typed something wrong. Ah, <laughs> that's silly. This should be in parentheses, not brackets. Again, and I can break this down onto multiple lines if I wanted to write it like that. Uh, but if it only needs to be on one line, I kind of like that. But we'll run it and now it should load that image in the center of the screen, but after four seconds, it disappears. So that is how you can draw any image you want to the screen and have it disappear after a certain amount of time and you can get its size. Again, uh, in the code, I have lots of notes. Um, and this link right here is very useful to get information on that draw the texture because it has all these settings here that you might want to look into. I do thank you for watching. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. Again, there's a link in the description of the video. Be sure to check out the full playlist. And I hope that you have a great day.